Hello everyone. Today I am on my 8th lecture on acid base chemistry. In my last lecture, that is in my 7th lecture, the relative strengths of acids and bases were discussed when they were in the solution phase. That means in different types of solvents, their different strengths were discussed in my last lecture. Today, what I am going to discuss is a very important and very interesting part of this chapter, which is the drago weyland equation. This drago weyland equation has made an attempt where the relative acidity and basicity can be measured when they are in the gaseous phase and not in the solution phase. Now, what is this equation? Let us take an acid A which is in the gaseous phase. So, A within bracket G. Let us take a base which is also in the gaseous phase. And when they combine with each other to form an adduct which is AB, this is also in the gaseous phase. So, what is the enthalpy change of this chemical change or this formation of adduct? The drago weyland equation for calculating the enthalpy change for this equation is minus delta H. That means the heat released A which is equal to Ea Eb plus Ca Cb. Now, what is Ea Eb and what is Ca Cb? The E parameters are the tendency to form or the susceptibility to form electrostatic bonds. That means uh, electrostatic interactions. That means the ion dipole interaction or the dipole dipole interaction. What are the interactions? The ion dipole interaction or the dipole dipole interaction. Okay. So E, E means the susceptibility towards formation of uh, electrovalent bond or the susceptibility to the species, uh, susceptibility of the species to undergo electrostatic interactions. Okay. Now, the suffix A goes for acids and B goes for bases. Uh, actually, you will write here capital A. Here it is small a. This is typing error. So, do not go for that. Okay, just you take it as E capital A and this is E capital B. And what are the C parameters? The C parameters are the susceptibility to form covalent bonds. That means their tendency to form covalent bonds. So, A stands for the tendency to form covalent bond, bond by acids and C, B, this stands for the tendency to form covalent bonds uh, by the basis that means their susceptibility. Now, let us elaborate the this drago valent parameters. So, we have already seen that the equation is E A E B and C A C B plus C A C B. Their summation is actually the heat release that means the minus delta H value. So, much negative the delta H value much negative would be the delta G value and much stable would be the adduct. So, it is it, it can be expected from these parameters that the acids with large E values that means the tendency to undergo electrostatic interactions. So, the acids with large E values form the most stable electrovalent adducts with the bases having large E values. That means, if the acid has higher E value and the base has higher E value. So, they have the tendency to form a stable electrovalent compound or an electrovalent adduct. Okay. And vice versa, if they have susceptibility to form the covalent bonds uh, for both acids and bases, then they will undergo uh, formation of covalent bonds also. So, the acids that bond well covalently will 
tend to form their most stable adapts with the bases that bond well covalently because the CACB this product is very then is very large so here are some dragovalent parameters which has been tabulized tabulated here it is EA look here it is uh, the typing error is not here it is correctly typed EA and this is CA for acids okay and these here it is EB and CB that means the interaction to form uh, the uh, tendency to form ele electrovalent bond and this is the tendency to form covalent bond so these are the bases so as for example the acids have been taken are uh, antimony pentachloride boron trifluoride iodine uh, phenol sulfur dioxide and trimethyl borane on the other hand the bases are ammonia benzene pyridine then methylamine and then finally trimethyl phosphine if you have a glance towards this table then you will find that boron trifluoride has the highest ea value and its ca value is also very good in compared to this all others look this is highest the ca value is highest among all these six acids as well as the ea value is highest among all these six on the other hand sulfur dioxide has both the values which are lowest now if we move on to the examples of the bases then you will find that among all the bases ammonia has the uh, good tendency to form electrovalent bond as well as the covalent bond for ammonia also among the bases the E value is highest as well as the C value is highest on the other hand which has the lowest value benzene has the lowest value uh, in both cases so it is clear from this uh, theoretical values keep in keep it in your mind that these values all are theoretical values which has been uh, calculated theoretically by Drago and Welland so we have found that when BF3 uh, combines with NH3 then the best adduct will be formed or the most stable adduct will be formed on the other hand when sulfur dioxide would combine with benzene then the least stable adduct will be formed now what are the features of this Dragovalent equation number one the E and C parameters enable us to predict about the enthalpies of reactions that have not been studies, studied that means it can uh, give an insight it can uh, it can give you an idea about the minus delta H values if an adduct is formed in the second point this equation also enable us to obtain some insight into the nature of bonding in various systems as we have discussed from the previous table that if the E values are higher then the bonding would have the nature which is electrovalent and if the C values predominate then the tendency to form covalent bond is higher and finally the E values can be compared to other E values only and the C values can only be compared to other C values only E value cannot be compared with C values or vice versa that means C values of the acid cannot be compared with the E value of the base or the uh, e value of the acid cannot be compared to the C value of the base. So these are the features of the Dragovalent equation. So what are the outcomes from this equation? 
equation the outcomes of this equation can be well explained if you take an example let us take the example of the adduct formed by antimony pentachloride and iodine so it is mm, clear from the table given earlier that the c value of sbcl5 is greater than that of the iodine so if we compare then it can be visualized that the uh, that antimony pentachloride has better susceptibility in covalent bond formation due to its highest c parameter uh, of iodine on the other hand the fact that the ea value of antimony pentachloride which is greater than that of iodine also accounts that antimony pentachloride is a bit is better in forming electrovalent bond also okay and in this case sbcl5 can be concluded to be an overall stronger lewis acid than i2 because it is superior in both ca and ea that means it has susceptibility to form electrovalent bond as well as covalent bond so you have to face such a question such a question that uh, why is sbcl5 a uh, stronger lewis acid than iodine then the answer uh, you have to explain uh, by throwing light from the drago wayland equation okay from the drago wayland equation you have to give the ea uh, eb and cacb values of both those uh, acids and bases uh, that means sbcl5 and i2 and then you have to explain these three points okay so these three points are actually the answers so you can take a note from these points uh, from that table i have tried to find out the theoretical delta h values of different adducts okay so as an acid i have taken here sbcl5 and combined them with all the five bases okay similarly as an acid i have taken iodine and found their delta h values with the five bases similarly the same thing has been done with bf3 trimethylborane as well as sulfur dioxide and from this calculation all these values are actually negative values okay but since here i have put the negative sign so these these are looking as appearing as positive but the delta h value is minus for example for this minus 20.21 okay for example this one is minus 50.60 this is the delta h value and if you say at minus delta h value then it is 52.60 value so <coughs> it has been found that the adduct between tri uh, boron trifluoride and ammonia is highest among all while the adduct between sulfur dioxide and benzene is found to be lowest so theoretically uh, you can explain that the why sulfur and benzene forms the least stable adduct while boron trifluoride and ammonia forms the most stable adduct and finally the experimental validity of the drago wayland equation because these are all theoretical values so uh, we have to uh, validate them from the experimental data so for the experiment we had to take trimethylborane which has the electrovalent parameter 12.6 and the covalent parameter 3.48 and as a base we took ammonia which has the electrovalent parameter 2.78 and the covalent parameter 7.08 therefore what should be the minus delta h value the minus delta h value is 59.7 okay it is 12.6 into 2.78 plus 3.48 into 7.08 this is typing error the into 7.08 part is disappearing here but the summation is correct 
okay so uh, rectify this this is a typing error the uh, multiplication sign and 7.08 is missing here when you are taking a note from this slide then just make the correction okay now uh, what is the delta h values if minus delta h is 59.7 then delta h is minus 59.7 kilojoule per mole okay then this is the theoretical value so what should be the experimental value from the experiment it has been found that the delta h value is minus 57.5 kilojoule per mole so they have a very close vicinity the experimental value and the theoretical value are almost same and here is the success of this drago wallet equation so this is a very important part of this chapter where the relative acidity and basicity strengths uh, have been theoretically formulated by means of the drago wallet equation so that's all for today thank you